Um, that actually reminds me of another person that I wanted to... Oh, I think it's this one. Oh, it is. This is great. This is a wonderful channel. So you know how I said, wouldn't it be great if this video randomly shifted into being about, like, capitalism or something? This is Literate Machine. And, um... Yeah, um... The, uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall and the Rise of the Alt-Right defund the Paw Patrol. And Paw Patrol is conservative propaganda. Um, <clears throat> Doctor Who, Kerblam, and the Problem of Capitalism. A Mind Forever Voyaging into Neoliberalism, Steve Maretsky, and the video game that saw it all coming. Um... Surprisingly, no videos about Disco Elysium, but Doom, Mist, and the War for the Soul of Video Games. Uh, I'm assuming that's going to involve capitalism. Uh, well, let's find out about Paw Patrol, people. Let's find out about what it means to be a 35-year-old who's jacking it to Paw Patrol, but at least we're not being racist or transphobic or something. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Round Adventure Bay. Here we are. Consider, if you will, a town. You've never seen a hospital in this town. You've never seen a school. Instead, prepubescent children work full-time jobs without adult oversight. It's okay, it's a cartoon for children. It's never really occurred to you that not one of them seems to have parents. Okay, the yeah, but it's a cartoon for children. Political apparatus of the town. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Hey, buddy, learn to edit your videos. What's this? This is how- I wasn't gonna mention it the first time, but it's now happened twice, at least. At least this is- this is at least the second time that I've seen a black frame. How hard is it? It's, like, harder to leave in a black frame. With most video editors, they will snap your fucking clips together. So it's like more of an effort for you to have left in a black frame somehow. I, I, okay. It's this entirely of a mayor, so self-aggrandizing she erects a solid gold statue of her pet chicken right in the center of town, a move reminiscent of the dogs of the brutal dictator of Turkmenistan. Otherwise, if you're wondering where the town budget goes... Is this his fucking avatar? Wow. He's like a smug uh, guy with, like, science, and <clears throat> he's got a bubble that he can breathe his own farts in with, and he's wearing a bow tie. You know, whatever, whatever outfit he's got on, he's also got on a bow tie. He's one of those. Direct your gaze he's, he's, to a... He's one of those. A tower. You can't miss it. On a defensible island with a single bridge. A tower topped with a retractable periscope so that it might... Sauron like, keep watch over the Sauron -like. world. Sauron like. Disguised around its outsides and from within its cavernous. This is like somebody saw the, the channel Noah called Well Gervais and got just the worst, the worst idea. They just got the worst influence. Um, why are you. Okay, I'm assuming that there's going to be a point. I mean, I, assumedly the point is that the police are bad, uh, defund the police, and this show has police in it. And so teaching children that the police exist is uh, conservative propaganda, I guess. That's, you know, actually on second thought, it might be smarter for him to just stay talking about the show like the, like he is now. Maybe, maybe once he actually starts to get into what the fuck the video is actually about, it might get a lot worse, actually. Subterranean garages pour forth a bewilderingly massive fleet of vehicles, cars, trucks, ATVs, construction equipment, Soy hovercraft. Wrong. Helicopters, boats, submarines, snowmobiles, and jetpacks sporting aviators. And all of it, for some reason, is under the command of a 10-year-old boy and his team of trained puppies. Every concert in town, every parade, every celebration seems to center around this circus-like emergency and law enforcement crew. Look now, there's an underage Dalmatian behind the wheel of a fire truck with the entire team on board, uh, the fact that it's an underage Dalmatian, that's the part that makes it weird. If it was a normal Dalmatian, if it was a grown 
Dalmatian. Then that would be fine, but it was a it was a, like a baby Dalmatian, so yeah, they can't they can't they can't drive a truck for shit. I mean, truck that would expect? plow through cars in its way if the roads weren't conveniently empty. So when so it- far the theme of tonight's stream has been people vastly overanalyzing cartoons for literal babies. Uh. Uh, well, okay, the other one's not literally for babies, maybe for literal children at least. This one's for literal babies, though. Like, like, like fucking toddlers. Um, and I mean, yeah, I guess, have you, like, you could make this exact same video so far. This is like a parody, though. I mean, you could make the exact same video about, like, the, 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 the Bugs Bunny and Tweety Bird show. Like, why is it that in this whole world, the only characters we ever seem to see are Bugs and his weird animal friends, and occasionally people with guns who want to kill Bugs Bunny? What's up with that? I mean, like, I don't know, just make, making, like, yeah, it's a, it's a cartoon. I don't know what the fuck, what are you getting at? I mean, if you want to argue that the show is making children like the police i okay i think that's kind of stupid but like fine there's maybe something to be said there at least you know it's like you want to call it like propaganda i mean i think again i think it's stupid but whatever it's trying whatever this is trying to get at by like over analyzing what the fucking like mechanisms the political mechanisms of paw patrolville i i think i think this guy needs to fucking settle down Never the team came through, as if cleared in advance just for them. Look, the Dalmatian has hopped out of his truck, doing his work as the town's only medical provider. A woman has an injured leg. Voice activated. From the dog's backpack emerges a screen, which flickers to life as he says this is this one step away from trying to analyze the politics of Pong. Uh, there is, I mean... Shit, like, you could. I mean... <laughs> Okay, Pong, it's two sides battling for control. Hey, it makes more sense than talking about the politics of Paw Patrol. I'm going to be honest, Pong Pong is a, be- a vastly better political allegory than Paw Patrol has a- it could ever be. Fully operational Come on now. X-ray. Popaganda. to the leg without the least regard for safety, probably ensuring everyone around will get cancer. Why does a relatively small town need such an overfunded rescue and law enforcement operation outfitted with enough military surplus to defend a small nation? Because the town is constantly under attack, primarily by the mayor of a neighboring town who, aided by his underage nephew and crew of kittens, will twirl Uh his mustache and steal anything. Okay, what? Okay. Okay. The guy is white and blonde. It can't be, like, foreigners. It can't be, like... The guy seems to be rich, too. So he's, like, it's. it seems to be, like, anti, you know, bourgeoisie or whatever. If you want to look at this from some kind of wacky fucking internet socialist lens... I, it, it seems like this guy is like the, the isn't this guy the fucking aren't we don't we don't we want to fucking defund these people too don't we want to like eat the rich or something so this guy seems like a good villain i mean right what's wrong with this guy as a villain the underage nephew and crew of kittens will twirl his mustache and steal anything that isn't nailed down and why not he knows he won't be punished not really after all the show must go on. No one ages here. Nothing changes. Oh my god. You're such a fucking loser, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is so fucking stupid. Uh, it's like, well, I was playing through uh, Infinite Wealth, and I'm just thinking, like, yeah, I guess, I mean, spoilers for that game. It's all over the marketing, but Kiryu has fucking cancer. And so, like, it's it's like they, they tried to give him a retirement in the sixth game. And they just couldn't, so they have to bring him back because he's such a draw. Mark, because the meta game angle of he putting Kazuma Kiryu on the box art sells copies, and people associate the series with him. So we have to keep bringing him back. So the only way feasibly that they can give the fucking guy a break is by literally just having him die. 
So I'm sitting there playing it, and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's kind of fucked up, you know, narratively that that's the way that this has to work. And it's like, this guy has just finally occurred, that's just finally occurred to him, like, well, the show must go on, there's no consequences. He doesn't even get punished for it! This is basically the Family Guy video, but it's just angrier, or it's just less angry and it's more political. Droll. The show must go on. Oh my god, I can't believe fiction. Mmm, yes. Mmm, yes. He's very sneering, isn't he? Look at his fucking little avatar. <laughs> I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> no one ages here. Nothing changes. Oh my god, it's like every cartoon and show ever made, dude. Wow, nobody's ever had this theory. Nobody's ever had this analysis of, like, South Park or Family Guy or Simpsons. Or fucking any other series ever. No, it's you. You're the first. Good. Good original concept here. Except the emergency and law enforcement services ever expanded. Socialist Mike Staklasa. Military grade equipment continuing to pile up around, within, and beneath the tower. Mm hmm. Okay, now we're, we've set up the world of Paw Patrol, everybody. Now we get into, like, the actual meat and potatoes of the video. We get into the politics of it, it looks like. Okay. So you've, you've, you've firmly established that the world of Paw Patrol is, uh, it's a fucking cartoon. Whatever. Who gives a shit? Gotcha. Created by a toy company literally called Spin Master, Paw Patrol continues the tradition of toy commercials as TV shows that dates back to the Reagan era repeal of regulations regarding product placement in children's shows. That was Reagan, huh? Ah. Oh. So in other words, the reason why we have an entire fucking world filled with consumers who won't let their fucking, you know, their action figures stop being relevant. That's, that's, uh, that goes back to Reagan then? Interesting. I never knew that one. That's, Actually, a very fundamental new piece of user lore, everybody. I didn't, I didn't know about that. <laughs> We're learning some news here. That's great. The single act resulted in an onslaught of shows based on toy lines and existing for the express purpose of selling them, including Transformers, My Little Pony, and G.I. Joe. Thus, we should at all times keep in mind the true express purpose of Paw Patrol is to function as the center of a marketing effort for an ever-expanding line and of merch. This is another thing that's like, wow, I can't believe... I, it, like, I feel sorry for this person. They made this channel. This person's probably like, what, like seven, six, you know, may, probably an adult, probably like 18, 19, maybe 20 or 20. I mean, I don't know. But like, probably kind of young and... Like, their mind is still being blown by the concept that most cartoons are just advertisements. Like, yeah, I know, it's a real fucking shocker. Just wait until you learn about the gendering of fucking deodorant having no real fucking reason to to happen. But, you know, other, other than for some reason it makes money. Just wait until he gets to that one. He'll have to make a whole second channel about that one. Nice. Indeed. The most remarkable thing about Paw Patrol as a TV show compared to other shows of its type is just how unremarkable it is. It's not merely anodyne, it's actively backwards. Anodyne. I'm not sure I've ever seen another show quite so unexamined and unreconstructed. The lead human character is a white boy, and the whole <laughs> group of puppies are all boys except one. He's playing... a fucking white boy. Yeah, where's the exaggerated swagger of Paw Patrol? Come into on the same self-fulfilling stereotypes of toy makers. We was Paw Patrol. Let's let's make it happen. That boys don't want girl cooties in their entertainment, and white people won't tune into shows led by non-white people. Thus, shows aimed at boys or even cross-gender audiences will tokenize both boys and BIPOC. And of course, BIPOC. the girl puppy's color scheme is pink because girl and her femininity is I, you know i don't think anybody has ever said bipoc as a joke that's the sad part is like i hear someone say bipoc and you think that that's like oh somebody's just being funny no i don't think anybody would even bother saying bipoc it's like you would say latinx or something to be like a joke to like to make fun of this type of person no bipoc seems too legit i think this person's legit there's not a there's this is oh man Oh, I really hope that they have some friends or something that can, that can like, t uh, by the way, I hate this dog. Uh, fuck this dog. Look at this stupid fucking dog. It's got like eyebrows. 
Why does it have eyebrows? It's a dog. It has like Billy Hatcher hair. It. I. This dog is. Stu I don't like this dog. By extra large eyelashes, as if puppies use lash rollers and eyeliner. As per Minnie Mouse, Daisy Duck, and so on. The boy designs are the default, while the girl designs are boy designs with added lashes, bows, and other extra signals. Oh my god, it's just... <laughs> I love when I pause, and it's just like his tiny little face in a, in a circle. That's good. Uh, I It's it's like watching a, a feminist frequency video again. Like watching somebody who just, you know, their mind is being fucking blown as we speak by the concept that, like... A lot of female characters are just like the boy design with a fucking bow and pink. Amazing. Wait till he wait till he makes his whole video about Ms. Pac-Man. Oh, don't even get him started. Jesus Christ. Of the main cast, there are two token non-white characters, both of whose ethnic identity has no bearing whatever on their personality. Yeah, or characters who were designed like a, over a hundred years ago too. So background. The ostensibly black Mayor Goodway plays Washington. And all of these people that are just like weird racists, like they go into this discussion of a cartoon and they're, you know, they think that they're being all like progressive or whatever, but they're just like, and this one's white and this one's white and this dog might be white and this lady's black, but she's not very dark though. And this one's white. Like, dude, Jesus fucking Christ, it's Paw Patrol. What is wrong with you? It's literally Paw Patrol. What the fuck? Face in hoedowns, a style of music literally popular. Ostensibly the black. <laughs> black music in the 1920s. Goodway was even played by a white actress. Oh my God. Seven, a form of voice acting blackface. Voice. For former you. Voice acting blackface. <laughs> oh. No, but people do, people do get really mad about that, though. People do get really mad about that. Uh, like the lady who plays um, fucking Diane from uh, BoJack Horseman being like, I shouldn't have been cast because I'm white. It's like ironically, of course, making making more of an more attention for herself and not some other like fucking Vietnamese actress or something, but just more. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I know. I guess you don't want that. You don't want the voice blackface. You don't never. You never want that. That's bad. That's not good. That's never good. Me. Never. The other non-white major character. She doesn't seem to have much personality to speak of at all. The main villain, Mayor Humdinger, meanwhile, is a Mayor Humdinger. It's like, it, this is one of those scenarios where, and like this is even worse too, because this is on such a more. Like, you watch somebody like, um, you know, you watch somebody like Dogs Eating Dogs 6 who's got, like, super autism, and he's, and, and he's, um, and, and he's, like, overly critically fucking analyzing, like, little kids on the internet who are being mean to him or whatever, and he's talking about, like, super dark Piplup, and, you know, it makes me wonder, like, does he ever stop... And just, like, st like realize how fucking silly this all is. But that's, like, a guy with, like, a lot of problems and, you know, it's a different situation. This is a fucking person who's trying to, like, analyze this show on some kind of critical fucking, like, deep political level. And you don't stop and realize- you don't ever- like, there's not a moment there where you're, like, writing the script for this and you get to Mayor Humdinger. And just, like, maybe just- I don't know. I mean, at the very least, take a take a little pause, and like rub your eyes and and like a sigh, and then just continue. Like maybe at least that, like something. You have to recognize how stupid this is. This he stereotype straight out of vaudeville, with the effeminate mannerisms historically linked closely with loose morals and cowardice. The show is mm, in other words, yes. mired in moldering old tropes without the least self-examination or apparent knowledge of the larger discourse that's been going on for decades now, where many other programs actively tilt away from this sort of thing, from Sesame Street to Bluey, and more progressive programs like Steven Universe actually work mm, to undermine them. So in other words, Paw Patrol is based. Them. Paw Patrol embraces them enthusiastically. Paw Patrol is not as bad as fucking Steven Universe. Oh man, you got my glowing endorsement. The tiniest bit of irony. But then irony doesn't really exist in the world of Paw Patrol. 
where SpongeBob SquarePants crammed irony into every subversive frame of nautical nonsense, an adventurous Paw Patrol joke will at best consist of a pun. While SpongeBob characters might have complex, ambivalent emotions, Sandy the Squirrel's simultaneous care for and annoyance with SpongeBob, for example. So now we're getting into like the oh man, hang on. There there you go. That's perfect. Um now we're getting into the like actual complaint of about Paw Patrol as a show, I guess. Which is that it's like lazy or and, like the writing is bad. It's not as bad it's not as good as something like SpongeBob. It's not creative, it's not ironic or critical of the world or anything but spongebob's clearly aiming for a higher fucking demographic than spun than like paw patrol paw patrol i mean i'm sure there were shows at the same time as early good when spongebob was still you know good early spongebob there were probably still a lot of shows that were just insipid trash for for babies too but you don't remember them so why i mean this is a fucking terrible video. There's no room for such complexity in Adventure Bay. And you may argue that the lack of complexity is due to the target age group, but SpongeBob doesn't exactly skew younger. No, in Paw Patrol, people are either good and trying to do good things, or they're bad and trying to do bad things. Even when characters should be annoyed, Marshall slamming into and knocking over the other pups in This is Mr. Exit. Every episode, for example, no such annoyance materializes. The presumptuous Mr. Exit. There's no room for negative emotions here. And while the characters in the- The malodorous Mr. Exit. PJ Masks, for example, might learn and grow with a proper character arc over the course of an episode, and villains sometimes even switch sides on a temporary or permanent basis, there's absolutely no possibility of this in Paw Patrol. At least that one looks like it's also a show for babies. At best, a character might learn to have more confidence in themselves. You know, there is something to be said for, again, like, don't, let's not, let's not all do the fucking thing where we're like, well, it's just for kids, bro. It doesn't need to have a brain. The people that write it don't need to give a shit, you know? Like, yeah, it would maybe, I mean, I think it's maybe fair to say that the show, I mean, I don't know, obviously I haven't watched any of it, but like, you know, it's a good thing in general to hold... Uh, uh, media to the standard that it should have like some fucking I don't know talent behind it you know what I'm you know what I'm saying like the basic complaint that it's kind of you know bland and and shitty is like maybe not a, a horrible complaint I mean again it is just a show for babies but there's probably baby shows that are better than Paw Patrol. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't look like a very good show. Like, I, I like I haven't seen much from Paw Patrol, but like they show this show here. Arc over the course of like, the, this episode. PJ Masks. And I mean, villains sometimes even switch sides on a temporary or yeah, like there's basis. There's like a little bit more going on here. It looks like a little bit better. There's and absolutely no possibility of this in Paw Patrol. At Paw Beth. Patrol looks so fucking bland. It, it's so cheap looking, and like I, I have no trouble believing this show is just like really garbage. I, it's probably a lot. It's probably trash. The character might learn to have more confidence in themselves. At first glance, Paw Patrol isn't the most obvious show at which to level the accusation of copaganda. <laughs> it's not about a police force per se. At first glance. Hey. It's not Law and Order, Blue Bloods, or Brooklyn Nine-Nine, where a sympathetic portrayal of a police department is built into the show's premise. Only Chase even has a police theme, while the other dogs have such inoffensive occupations as construction worker, firefighter, ocean rescuer, or, strangely, recycling truck driver. And much or of what girl. they do falls into the category of search and rescue operations, as opposed to law enforcement. Even when Chase does get the spotlight, he's often doing such... I like the idea that this is... I mean... Cops do that sort of stuff, too. I mean, not maybe as much as, like, a firefighter or whatever, but this is clearly just showing, like, yeah, I mean, it's it's like rescue rangers or something. It's, oh my god, cat stuck in a tree. We gotta save the fucking... You know, like it's 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 not exactly going into the fucking bureaucratic 
depths of the police department or something. Unglamorous things as directing traffic or laying down traffic cones. In the early episodes in particular, the pups were more likely to help baby turtles cross a busy road or find a lost elephant calf than do battle with criminals. I actually talked about the Paw Patrol in my previous episode about superheroes and the police, where I what? referenced the turnaround in Season 5, where the characters are exposed to a mysterious meteor and are granted superpowers. In that episode, I focused on how Chase the Police Dog is a model of what we imagine policing should be like, helpful, selfless, <sighs> interested in lawfulness and justice without prejudice or rank. This is copaganda. No minorities are beaten by the cop dog. That's true. This mayor lady or whatever, whoever she is, she better, she better not, she better not get on the wrong side of the cop dog, you know. However, I didn't at all touch on why it's a problem for the police to be portrayed this way so consistently throughout media. They're frequently lumped in with firefighters, for example, as real heroes. Meanwhile, heroes. other workers, no less heroic like EMS, don't get the same treatment and definitely don't get anything like the pay, remaining criminally underpaid. Does this guy also talk about horse cock? I mean, I don't know. The only way to know about that is to keep watching him, I guess. Overworked. Police he might are start talking about dog cock. I thus mean... presented as just another arm of the municipal services that keep us all safe, which is, of course, what they're supposed to be. And yet the police's remit is different from that of firefighters, trash collectors, or construction workers. The police have... Well, a construction worker is a really weird one to have involved in that. That is strange. And re recycling? I mean... <clears throat> yeah, like arguably a garbage truck person maybe would be like part of that i guess not really not no it's a very i don't know it's but it's all just a bunch of different professions that kids could have someday i guess i don't know are we just supposed to pretend the police don't exist we're supposed to lie to our children about santa being real and also lie to them and pretend the police aren't real that's the only way to raise a child correctly. And also never, ever make them eat broccoli. Unique powers over others, like the right to detain, imprison, and use violence. And the problem with giving any group power over others is that you have to be sure they use it responsibly. That kind of authority, after all, will attract exactly the sort of people most willing to abuse it. I'm not going to rehash the list of police brutality right. cases over the decades. Not going to once more subject uh, you to horrifying videos like the ones that set off the waves of protest last year. Yeah, I, um... It, oh, man. There are a lot of people who get a little too... Not every problem in the world needs to be solved by you, dude. You know what I mean? Like... There's so many fucking people that just, like... Wow, yeah, congrats on fucking comparing, congrats on talking about, like, police brutality deaths and stuff, uh, in your video about Paw Patrol, man, you've really changed the fucking, you've really changed the conversation here, uh, in more, in more ways, probably not in the way that you were thinking you would, but, yeah, I love the, the long period here between the tw 1922 and 1951 with no police brutality there was a great period there there were some other things that were going on historically in that period that were not so great but you know other than that no police brutality that's you gotta give you gotta give that period of time one 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 thing at least there was not a lot of police brutality if you want that sort of thing it's not hard to find but i want you to consider something Derek Chauvin was recently convicted after being filmed murdering George Floyd on camera. Jesus but there Christ. were three other police officers on the scene with him who have also been arrested. Did he just censor the word police? Is that what we're is that what we're on now? I the, maybe this is just his audio fucked up. I haven't noticed him, he did it before. But he might have just censored the word police and are awaiting trial. Why didn't one of them pull Chauvin off while he knelt on the man's neck for nine minutes, while he begged for his life and asked for his mother? Well, we know why. Huh? Police who issue complaints about other officers are called rats, 
as if the police forces were the very... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of reform in the police department, and they probably shouldn't have let that guy kill George Floyd. What does this have to do with fucking Paw Patrol, dude? What the fuck? Now we're talking about Serpico? And meanwhile, on television, we have show after show where the police are not only the incorruptible good guys, but often have to work outside the system in order to mete out justice. Yeah, well, that's why you, uh, that's why you, that's why you, you know, you, you play Yakuza instead, where in, instead you have heroic criminals. It balances the scales. You got evil police and heroic criminals. It's, it's perfect. Police sometimes just have to rough a guy up to get the truth. Wouldn't you? After all, torture works. Spoiler, it doesn't. It wasn't that long ago that New York police officers abused Abner Luima by sodomizing... Great. Um, sure, man. Uh, defund the Paw Patrol. Um, once again, this is literate machine. And um, Loki and how conservatives become fascists here. Star Trek into socialism? How will capitalism end? The Orville, Edward Bernstein, and what is to be done? Man, what is to be done, truly? P Pixar's soul, finding yourself under capitalism. Boy, this guy sure, this communist sure supports and watches a lot of media made by big evil corporations like Disney. There sure are a lot of reviews for things like Star Trek and Loki and Soul and a lot, a lot of stuff like that. It's funny. It's weird that you don't, hmm. Uh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm fascinated to know how you think Marvel is not only not woke, but like the reverse of that, I guess. Let's find out how Loki is like anti-woke. It's going to turn your kids into conservatives. It's gonna, it's gonna make the frogs, uh, hate the gays. Here's a Okay, thank god we got a trigger warning, everybody. I'm now going to be mentally prepared and on edge constantly at all times, waiting for those things to come up so that I can be prepared for when they come up, so that I won't have to think about them. Thank god. The story you might have heard before. Loki, Prince of Asgard has always been smarter and more capable than his older brother Thor. And yet their father, King Odin, perpetually favors the lunkhead and intends to abdicate and make Thor king in his place. Why should a lesser be raised up before him? There must be some ulterior motive, a motive that finally becomes clear when he discovers he's not Odin's biological son at all, but instead one of the enemy frost giants. Yeah, okay, like, I gotta be... I can't believe I'm saying this, but bro, you're you're a real shitty socialist, dude. Try harder. I, I'm sorry, you're over here reciting the entire corporate doctrine of fucking bourgeois Disney Marvel Drek, and you want me to believe that you're a comrade, dude? Nah, nah, -uh, sir. You don't get invited to the socialist dinner parties. Fie, I say. And now it all makes sense. He was secretly hated because of left-wing dork in the house race but this reversal of the natural order will not stand he will take what is rightfully his by any means necessary he will heroically stand against the darkness his first plan fails but he finds a new bro i literally don't even care <laughs> he has to do this i guess in every video it has to be like the whole fucking backstory of the show, I guess that makes sense. Alright, I gotta click on a video game one, because it's me. Let's find out about the soul of video games. This is Literate Machine. I'm Eric Rosenfield. Oh Doom. no, you really don't want to say your full name with opinions like these, dude. Mist and the war for the soul of video games. In the 1990s, Doom and Mist fought a war for the soul of video games. Mist sold almost twice as many copies. Within 10 years, the entire industry had remodeled itself around Doom. The seeds of the war had been sown at the... <sighs> okay, so how... What could this... I... I'm... F I'm... I I'm flabbergasted right now trying to guess what this video will be about. 
Doom, Mist, and the War for the Soul of Video Games. So, I guess Doom is a game that's all of... I, okay. Mist has no combat. Doom is all about killing. So, is that what it's going to be? They're both first person, mid-90s, whatever. It's going to be something like that, I guess. It's going to be something like... But how is it going to factor in the weirdo fucking anti-capitalist, like, socialist bullshit? Uh, I, something, I, the, 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 the proles want to buy games with shooting because the masses, I don't know, I, we'll have to find out. We'll have Dawn to find of out. personal computing. As has been widely reported, computer programming was once the domain of women. Positions descended from their earlier roles as human computers, solving mathematical problems for corporate and governmental work. Labor Those were the days! As computer programming became more complicated, it gradually shifted to men, aided by personality tests used by employers that prioritized stereotypically men. As it got too difficult for women with their tiny, feeble brains to comprehend it, men had to step in and take over and, and give them a cookie for their efforts. Masculine traits and increasingly antisocialness. Still, women in computing were common until the late 70s when personal computers began to appear. These personal computers were marketed primarily towards boys. Parents bought them for boys. And as a result, computer science classes began to fill up with those same boys who had grown up with the machines. Marketing towards boys accelerated following the video game console. And literally, as it got harder, women stopped. <laughs> Uh, you didn't have to phrase it that way, dude. I don't know if that's how it happened, but that's certainly how he phrased it. Yeah. Crash of 1983. Then dominant Atari had flooded the market with cheap and poorly produced games, and the result was a loss in consumer confidence, paired with the idea that the new multi purpose personal computers had made dedicated consoles obsolete. And so it was when, in 1985, the Japanese company Nintendo decided to bring their new entertainment system to the North American market. They packaged it with a little toy robot that would follow the player character around on the screen. And this robot had a penis. Screen, so that it could be marketed not as a game console at all, but as a toy. The console migrated out of electronics. I swear to God, if this video tells me about Doki Doki Panic being Mario 2, I will not do anything really, but it will be in a notable moment that I will get a chuckle out of. Electronic shops and into toy stores. As anyone who's entered a toy store knows, the toy market is starkly gendered, with girl products in their rows of bright pink cordoned off from that of boys. I just, just like, I guess there's a lot of stupid people out there that need to watch a video like this that just tells them very basic, obvious shit. It's, it's reminding me so much of Feminist Frequency. It's like, why do you... How dumb are you? Yeah, they gender the fucking toys. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's like... A lot of the shit in the last video would be stuff, like, a lot of weird little points that he made about, like, this is a show, after all. They can't have consequences. It's, like, it's just the most, like, first entry-level fucking, like, points you can make about a subject like this. And, and I mean, you, I, I don't know. I haven't heard much that's better than those points. Nintendo's research said that boys played more games than girls, and so, as had happened with personal computers, they marketed their products exclusively to boys, creating a feedback loop attracting more boys while excluding girls. It wasn't that girls couldn't enjoy these games. It was that the company told both kids and their parents that this was a boy's toy for boys. By 1989, when the Sega Genesis launched in North America, boys who had grown up on the Nintendo were now hitting puberty. So Sega. this is literally a feminist frequency video. I mean, I mean, I'm, I was kind of joking about that before, but now I'm recognizing, I mean, this is almost literally what her videos were. It's like this kind of truncated history told in the service of spinning a very particular narrative, uh, y you know, uh, but I guess this is talking... What's funny is this is talking more about that. If you watch the stream where I looked at the feminist frequency videos from like a decade ago, uh, I kept complaining that she never addressed basically this, which is that the games were targeted more towards boys. And why was that? 
So I guess this is actually the video that I was looking for, actually. Behind all of the very basic, obvious shit, maybe he'll actually have my answers for me. Maybe it's also Reagan's fault. They have marketed their product as the cool game system, not like that childish Nintendo 64. The Genesis wasn't just for boys. It was for the kind of boys who didn't like little kid things or icky girl things or boring things. Alpha boys. Their mascot, Sonic the Hedgehog, perhaps tried a bit too hard to seem cool while embodying the fast action ethos of the company, but all the ads and marketing would prime the pump for what was to come. Marketing to boys became marketing to pubescent boys, became marketing to stereotypes of pubescent boys, to make things fast and loud and free of thoughtfulness. Masculinity turned mm. to toxic masculinity quick. And oh by the God. 90s, all the game systems were flooded with ads that- Masculinity turned to toxic masculinity. Sonic turned to Bubsy. It was a terrible time. Played up stereotypes and lurid pandering to the hilt. A Sega ad advertised a beautiful oh, woman you wouldn't notice under all these game screenshots. In a Neo Geo ad, a model in lingerie pouts at the camera while her boyfriend plays video games in the back. Would you believe that the gamer industry is is male dominated? I don't believe it. Here's Pokimane with the weather. Crowned with the text, I remember when he couldn't keep his hands off of me. A particularly infamous women don't deserve rights. Tales. Reading, the more you play with it, the harder it gets. In 1989, there was even a PlayStation TV ad in which a character is shown having to choose between playing manly games or being totally whipped by his girlfriend. In 1992, the Genesis gained two titles that would make it infamous and mark the natural result of the prurient bro-boy marketing strategy. Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. Originally in the arcades, really, Night Mortal Trap? Kombat was a fighting game whose characters literally pulled skeletons. I don't, think, I don't think Night Trap was really a game. Like, Mortal Kombat was a game that was both, like, popular and successful and, you know, well-made and also really uh, controversial. Night Trap was just controversial and then it kind of got some buzz, but I don't think it was, like, a popular game necessarily. It wasn't exactly setting the fucking world on fire like but like Mortal Kombat at that point in time. Skeletons out of bodies amid geysers of blood. Night Trap involved the player watching live surveillance of a no, family home where five Night teenage Trap. girls disappeared. While tamed by today's standards, the game's focus on watching young women in scanty outfits get assaulted. Well, it's well made if you don't try to play like the single player mode of Mortal Kombat 2. I'm pretty sure that's... Isn't that like impossible? I, I think it's... I think it's at least extremely weirdly hard. I I remember that the I think Mortal Kombat 2 in particular is like kind of unfair the the story mode of that, well story mode, quote unquote, the single player by vampires became caught up in one of the periodic video game moral panics and led to Senate hearings. While console games fled fast into a single I really hate this guy's avatar though. It's like the perfect it's like the perfect exact angle to be like a smug, arrogant prick with his head like held high, like looking down upon you, d looking down over his big, big nose upon you. Little boy focused marketing segment. Computer games had followed a different tack. Unlike consoles, basically anyone with a computer could make software that ran on these machines. And so, a much wider variety of content appeared on them, including adventure games. Adventure games had begun as text-only programs, where the player would get a description of a room or environment, and then type- And I am interested in the con uh, what he's getting at in the video, as much as he's kind of annoying, he's a little boring, whatever, but it's like, eh, this is of interest to me, I, you know. I was just playing Zork last week. Type a command of what they wanted their character to do. Quickly, graphics were added to these games until companies like Sierra and LucasArts were turning out what became known as point-and-click adventures, where a character walked across a screen and the user would click on the objects or people they wanted he to interact it. with. In this way, the player could explore a world, solve puzzles, and take part in an unfolding narrative. While these games, like all computer games, were played... Is he going to make the argument that these games are, like, more accessible to women or something because... Because I gotta be fucking honest, these games are less accessible to fucking anybody than, like, a normal video game. 
if for those of you that are not aware, a lot of the game, not all of them, but a lot of the games that he's showing right now as like adventure games of the time, uh, are really weird bullshit nightmare games where you just like walk in the wrong part of the screen and like a, a fucking avalanche falls on you and you die kind of thing. Like, or you, you use an item and then 17 hours later you find out that you needed that item and you need to restart the whole game. You know, stuff like that. So I, these these games are not exactly, like, accessible to people. I, I don't know. Not any more so than a fucking Mortal Kombat or a Doom or something. I, I guess they're, like, less visually, you know, extreme and violent. But, I, I mean, I don't know why that's necessarily a gendered thing either. I mean, Dominantly by boys. The creators often pitched them towards a much wider audience and dreamed of a future where the computer game would stand beside mediums like film and television, enjoyed by people of all genders and age groups. With the dawn of the CD-ROM drive and the massive amounts of data it could store, many times that of the default storage medium of the time, the floppy disk, the imaginations of many game developers... The fucking CD-ROM drive? What do you... We haven't even gotten into Doom yet. Doom was before the CD-ROM. Hold your fucking horses there, Jethro. ...developers turn to so-called interactive movies using live-action actors. As Sierra CEO Ken Williams put it, I always thought the future of storytelling was on the computer. I predicted that computer games would be bigger than films, and I still believe there is a huge potential with storytelling games if done correctly. Watching a story from the inside is more exciting than from the outside. But the true future of gaming would come not from the big name companies dreaming of celebrity castings, but from a ragtag group of men in their 20s operating out of a rundown riverfront house. That feel when you become this guy's bitch. It's a great thing when a photo like this becomes a famous photo because you get like him making this like shiggity dig dog diggity face and then him making his like tarred face. And then I don't know, is this Sandy Peterson? I forget which one this is, but he's... He's making his best, like, look at him and laugh! And, and that's a good, that's also a good pose. This is a great photo to, to, to become a famous photo. This is, a, this is, this is what you want your photo to be. If it becomes famous, like, you want it to be one where you're doing something wacky. Unless you're dead or something, in which case, or like a murderer, in which case, <laughs> you probably don't want to be murderer John Romero, and this, this is what they show on the news. In Shreveport, Louisiana, <laughs> who came to call themselves id Software. Their first game became a huge hit in the small shareware scene of indie games at the time. A platformer in the Mario Brothers model, unflaggingly wholesome in both name and content. Commander Keen, 1990 to 1991. Shareware was a model in which software was distributed in part or in whole for free, with the user paying for the rest of the program or documentation support, or simply to support the game makers. The tradition lives on in software uh -huh. trial periods, Patreon-funded developers, and so on. For their next game, they aimed for something more ambitious and much more graphically violent. Deciding on a shooter, they chose an homage to one of the original of the breed, Castle Wolfenstein 1981. Instead of the top down. This really, this video is hammering home how much. So there's a channel I really like. Uh, he he does game analysis stuff. It's Noah Caldwell Gervais. He'll talk for like nine hours about the entirety of every Fallout game, and talk about its. It, it, he has very interesting and unique perspectives on games and kind of a, kind of a. Sometimes, sometimes gets a little political, but it's all right. Uh, he's cool. And this video is kind of like that if it was a, a much less interesting and a much more annoying and slow paced and less clever and uh, yeah, just not very good. View of the original game or the side view of a worse microphone. It would place you inside the head of the protagonist looking out on a 3D world. And the game would strip out everything but the barest... Assignment. He even did a video talking about uh, playing through all of the Quake games from a story perspective. And what's notable about that is that the first couple Quake games basically have no fucking story whatsoever. So he mostly had to go meta about it and talk about the actual, you know, creation of Doom and then Quake and yada yada yada. Here are Nazis. Shoot them before they shoot you. 
And thus was born the genre-defining Wolfenstein 3D, 1992, okay. which took off like a rocket, becoming probably the best-selling shareware game. This is still kind of not all that critical of what he's talking about, though. I mean, like, a little bit. He's pointing out that, like, a, a, I guess a game like this is more of more drawn toward men, or it's marketed toward boys, at least. But it's not really asking why so much. I mean, I, that's the question I want to know. That, that's what I've been dying to know ever since I did that fucking feminist frequency stream. Why is it that, like, yeah, okay, games are marketed to boys and some are marketed more toward boys than others even, like Doom, you know, violent games. Well, okay, but why, though? Why is it that we've decided on violence as the answer and why does that work? Like, it's me during my commercial streams asking, oh, why is this yogurt, like, specifically for, for women and men can't eat this yogurt? And people in chat go, well, because it's marketing and it works. And it's like, okay, but psychologically, I want to know why. Make that video. Fucking hell. To that point. And getting reviews in mainstream publications that other shareware titles had only dreamed about. A boring Two college later, lecture. A long anticipated A-list game came out with a similar 3D first-person perspective. Ultima Underworld. There's like not even an attempt to make this entertaining. It's it, it it really is like feminist frequency. It's bizarre how dry this is. You can't have any fucking fun with this at all. You're sitting here talking to me about video games and you, you, you this is the worst video ever. And while the first person play was far more well realized in this game, for example, you could move up and down, which you couldn't in Wolfenstein 3D. As an RPG game, the first-person mode was one of several, and the gameplay was far more cerebral with puzzles, clues... You're gonna say the first person is better in this game than it is in Th Wolfenstein, just because you can, like, look up and down? I mean... Wolfenstein, you don't have this tiny, tiny little window, and you can actually... I've played some of this Ultima Underworld game. It is one of those bizarre 90s DOS games that uses, like, every key on the keyboard, and it's really unintuitive, and you'd think that you could just, like, move normally, but you actually click on this thing to fucking move. I don't know if this is better than fucking Wolfenstein. You can still play Wolfenstein 3D. It still plays like a normal fucking video game, you Maps know? Maps and skill leveling. There was a plot. Ultima Underworld was a successful game, but Wolfenstein, a game which had taken far less time and effort to make ran absolute rings around it and became the game of 1992. Yeah, where's the where's the skits and the evil literate machine forcing him to play Super, Noah, Super Noah's Ark 3D? Ew. Come on. For their follow-up, it improved the 3D engine to match Ultima Underworld, allowing true three-dimensional views and movement and multi-level environments. I'm they glad to confirm, by the way, there's a sub chat member who says, as a woman, I just play Skyrim and Pokemon. Thank you. I mean, we all knew that, but it's good to have that... It's good to have that uh, confirmed, thank you. Created a much wider variety of weapons, and instead of Nazis, the player would face all manner of creatively imagined demons and monsters. Women don't there like would even these be things. a handful of minor puzzles, places Women where don't like puzzles. Would, for example, push a button to open a door in another location. Are we going to get into why this is more men once and for all toxic and men shareware men like and into the stratosphere of the top mainstream game companies, creating a franchise that would last for decades. Doom. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, back in nineteen. 19- okay, but like the other, the other ang half of this coin is 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 missed, which also spawned a franchise that had like three or four games in it, not as popular or long lasting as Doom. But I mean, really, uh, I, I, you're not gonna act like Mist has not been fucking, you know, revolutionary and uh, in in you know inspired a lot of other game developers and stuff or something 88 yeah. two brothers operating out of their parents basement in spokane washington were inspired by the new graphical development tool hypercard 1987 for the macintosh i actually don't know it, much they about created three children's games focused less on achievable goals and more on simply exploring worlds and founded the company scion inc to sell them by 1990 they decided to make a game for adults using the same system called mist much as id had stripped the action game down to its barest essentials, Scion stripped down the point-and-click adventure game. Instead of a player character walking around the screen, their game placed you inside the head of the protagonist looking out on I the mean, screen. I mean, I'm getting the horrible feeling as we're approaching halfway here that this video's not even going to actually be about 
like feminist or it's not even going to be about gender and gaming at all like it kind of starts out that way for some reason uh but then it doesn't seem like it's really following that thread at all i wanted this video to follow that thread and 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 be the fucking feminist frequency video that she never made that i kept asking her to make in that whole stream and it never existed uh I thought that that might have been this, but apparently it still isn't this. It seems like we're not coming... I mean, we might come back to that. But I guess we're just getting more into specifically these two games and the Soul War? Okay. World. Well, this game would have bits of live action... The thing is, with a video like this, you're supposed to have an idea of where it's going at this point. Like, you're supposed to... It's supposed to have given you, by this point in a video like this, it's supposed to have given you all of the pieces that you need to understand what's happening, where it's going to lead, you know, and, 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 in, and in this case, I'm just, I'm still, I'm like almost halfway. What the fuck are you getting at? I, what are you just, you're just talking about old video games. I, great. Yeah. Doom's cool. Mist is cool. Play them, play them both. Awesome. Fucking get to the point. I don't need to know the whole story, the whole fucking history of Mist. What's the point? You know, the bulk of time would be spent this is really pissing me off. puzzles, solving them and unraveling the mysteries of the backstory and characters. As first-person 3D games, Mist and Doom are actually quite similar. The primary difference between the two is philosophical. In Mist, your character fell through a book into a world of fantasy. In Doom, your character was sent to a space station to put down monsters. Gameplay in Mist involved exploration, unraveling a mystery. Cool, like, ad-libbing microphone fills there, and I solving guess. puzzles. Gameplay in Doom involves shooting demons. Mist required a CD drive. Why can't we talk to the demons? Drive in the latest in SVGA graphics. Doom fit on a few floppies and ran on common VGA graphics. Mist. What does any of this have to do with communism, comrade? Had been released first on the rarefied Macintosh. Doom had been released first on ubiquitous. MMA. I am going to make you give me back all of your gray clothing and drab materials, sir. You are no longer allowed to come to the Karl Marx Freakdown next mo next week. Fuck off. DOS machine. This is such this is such lame communist critique. Mist was the game you bought to show off your new machine. Doom was the game you played on whatever you had. Mist appealed to a broad demographic and actually finally had more female players than male. Doom was marketed to the same core demo. Somebody's, somebody's starting a timer for how long I can watch this guy before they leave. Okay. Well, the video's got more. Uh, well, technically, the video has less than 10 minutes in it, so maybe if we're real fast about it, I. Oh, please, God, don't go. It was Jesus Christ. Graphic of pubescent boys who'd eaten up Mortal Kombat. Mist was beautiful. Doom was cool. Mm -hmm. To be clear. It's not that girls and women can't enjoy shooting games. It's that they're not who these games were marketed to, targeted at, or who parents would think to give them to in our gender normative culture. But why, though? Stripped down shooters like... I mean, this. I hate to be like a seven-year-old, but... But why, though? Wolfenstein 3D and Doom left in only mindless violence, which our culture... Like, you, you, don't need to, uh, you don't need to tell me that girls are not who Doom was marketed toward. I know that. Why, though? Why, why, why weren't they? Make that video. This is just uh, p fucking telling me obvious things. Associates primarily with Or shit that's not even re relevant. Like Wolfenstein, Mist ascended from its humble origins to outsell the biggest, most expensive games on the market. It would have been the game of 1993, except, of course, that year also saw the release of Doom. The sales numbers for these two games exponentially dwarfed most of their competitors. In a world where selling a few hundred thousand copies was considered a major hit, Doom moved over three million. He really needed to, like, fill in, like, a, a fu He needed to record separately himself saying the word copies and drop it in there. What did he say instead of copies? Did he fuck up the word copies? Maybe it sounded too much like he was talking about cops and he had to re-record it to sound a little different so that it was a little more distinct. ...million units and missed more than six million. And in doing so, these games ushered in the era of the PC game Blockbuster. And while it is true that Mist sold nearly twice as many copies as Doom, that statistic doesn't tell the whole story. Doom was id's last game distributed as shareware, which meant that the first few levels of the game could be freely copied and passed around. 
And those free levels traveled far and wide, making it into store shelves and shareware. Maybe that's why it was more popular than Myst. Maybe that was why. Compilations as free giveaways with magazines, copied from person to person on floppies and CDs. It's also like, we're talking about like, oh, Doom is more for boys. It's marketed to boys. It's got shootings, so boys... I don't know, man. Mist puzzle like a adventure games have like puzzles in them. You got to use your brain, and especially already at that point, people are probably like, "Man, I don't want to do another weirdo fucking puzzle where I got to skin a cat to turn into like a fake mustache to pretend to be a guy who didn't even have a mustache." I, it, like I don't, I don't, I don't want to play a game. I just want to play a game where I kill monsters. You know, like Doom is a much more simple game that's a little more easy for people to fucking understand and pick up and play than Mist. And Mist isn't even as bad as that whole fucking genre gets. Mist is fine. Mist is. I've played a bit of Mist. It's not like a one. It's not one of those adventure games. But I wouldn't blame somebody at that point in time in 1993 having been burnt by a King's Quest game and being like, no, you know, I'm gonna, I'm good. I'm just gonna play the game where I shoot monsters in the face. I don't need another fucking game that, like, kills me by, because I ate the wrong slice of pie or something. Like, no thank you. I, I'm, I'm good. He's showing up on the dial-up bulletin boards, gopher sites, news groups, and the primitive websites of the period. And so while fewer people paid for Doom, and to be clear, many, many people still paid for Doom, an order of magnitude more people played Doom. The end result of all this would take years to become clear. Companies fell over themselves to duplicate these games in hope of duplicating their sales. Doom-style games like Doom 2, 1994, the aggressively sexist Duke Nukem 3D... The aggressively sex... Oh, man, did someone not get the joke? I mean, he's right. I, I, I Technically, he's not wrong by saying it's aggressively sexist. That's not wrong. <laughs> Does he know th that's the point, though? <laughs> like, oh, dear. D96 and Unreal 1998 continued to sell like gangbusters. Meanwhile, Mist-style games like Zork Nemesis 1996, Zork Nemesis? Lighthouse the Dark Being 1996, and Obsidian 1997 okay, well, yeah, no, I've commercial disappointment. I've literally never heard of any of these, actually, to be fair. I didn't know there was a Zork Nemesis. Was that still text-based by 96? Probably not. Uh... No, I mean, yeah, I, there's a lot of adventure games out there. Um, you know, sure, it would be cool. This is being weirdly un... It's not talking about the fucking history that adventure games had. Yeah, there's probably a lot of people who didn't want to fucking play them because they were a, lo a lot of them were a bunch of fucking bullshit. Because every game Sierra ever made was just a bunch of shit. It was just a bunch of stupid, wacky shit. You needed, like, a guide to fucking play it, or just, like, trial and error your way through just nonsense that made no fucking sense. No wonder people didn't want to buy adventure games at this point in time. Because it's the exception to the rule to find one that's not moon logic silliness. Though Riven, the sequel to Myst, 1997, was successful selling 4.5 million units. And with them, the point-and-click adventure fell out of fashion, along with the dream of the interactive movie for the whole family. More and more games began to look like Doom. Other types of gameplay and game player were pushed to the cultural periphery. The war had ended and Myst lay in a pool of blood and nostalgia. So what happened? Why did the children of one blockbuster succeed while those of the other failed? People bought Myst for its okay, beautiful graphics and me. intriguing story, and learning to play was as easy as clicking on things. However, the difficulty curve on the puzzles was sharp. The creators of Myst would later remark that most people probably didn't make it off the first island slash time period of the game out of seven. I should mention here seven. I remember uh, playing Myst, and I got as far as. So there's the first island area, and then you go. I think the next area in Myst is this like tree village place where you're like walking through like like bridges or uh, 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 connecting trees big trees and then the next area i remember i was like underground and i was going on some kind of weird fucking like mine cart through this horrible maze 
And then I think I was having some kind of technical issue mixed with uh, hating how much the maze sucked, and then I just stopped playing it. Um, so, yeah, no, it's possible that the, the people might have just... People might have reached, like, a weird maze in... Hell, even Doom has levels that are like, where the fuck do I go? Good God, I have all the keys. Where's the door? Fucking hell. Oh, it was through a secret wall. Fuck off. Yes, 1993, another puzzle-based point-and-click adventure game that sold well in part by showing off the potential of people's computer systems, released in the shadow of Myst and benefiting from its favorable early reception. But the failings of Myst as a game, even if it turned people off similar games, does not alone explain how the once booming adventure genre fell into decline and why companies like Sierra and LucasArts largely stopped producing them, especially since Myst's own sequel was a success. People sometimes blame Moon Logic for the fall of adventure games, ah, the tendency ah, in them ah. to have puzzles that were ill thought out or illogical. But LucasArts games were known for being largely absent of such issues, and their games got rave reviews, so that explanation alone doesn't cut it. As we So the ones that didn't have those were popular and the one I mean I guess I get what he's saying. It's possible for games to have succeeded in that space, you know, but Maybe that's because they were all the LucasArts ones and people knew that they could trust Monkey Island or whatever to not have that kind of shit in, in the game. I still don't know if I can trust that fucking... I, 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 there's, there's, there's games in that era that I'm like, uh, I could play this, this seems cool, but like, I know Monkey Island doesn't have this, but is Day of the Tentacle gonna have this, you know? I still have like fucking shell shock about those kinds of games, because I remember watching Retsu Prey play through fucking King's Quest and how fucking insane ki the whole King's Quest series is with its fucking puzzles and shit. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, I guess he addresses it, but he kind of hand waves it away. I think it's a much bigger deal than he's getting at. Those fucking games are insane. We saw earlier, after the rise of Nintendo, video game marketing focused almost exclusively on boys, gradually turning more stereotypical and toxic. The 90s were a decade that saw massive growth in PC. What about it was toxic? PC home ownership. From 20% of the I, this, this is the type of person who just hears these buzzwords. It's like, what's toxic about it? What the fuck is toxic about, like, Duke Nukem? What, that it's a joke that you don't like? What's, to what's, what's toxic? Why are they toxic? In households at the beginning of the decade, 50% by its end. Further... As home consoles and PC ownership rose, arcades, once the primary way kids played video games, declined. And so as the boys who had been marketed to in the 80s and early 90s grew up into teenagers, they became the dominant block of what came to be known as gamers. And game companies, Gamer. under the capitalist impulse towards massive growth, didn't want to chase moderate success. They wanted the blockbusters that they now knew were possible. It wasn't so much that the adventure is the end result of this video that capitalism is a bitch. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. If your video is literally why doesn't the nice game that I like get made anymore? Oh, it didn't get enough money. Oh, capitalism. That's the video, isn't it? Is that what is that what we're getting at? Is that really all this is? Ultimately, this whole fucking 20 minute video gets to didn't sell much in it. Ah, didn't sell enough in it. Nah, not making more. Didn't sell enough. Nope. It's good, good video. Cool video. Game audience. Cool left. fucking video. Game makers left. This that. motherfucker told me how many discs Doom came came on, and ultimately the video is gonna just be about like, that didn't sell enough. And yet. What the similarities between Doom and Myst show is that there's nothing about the first-person 3D game that inherently means the primary activity must be violent. That's a choice. And it's a choice that game makers keep making even when ostensibly trying to make their games more narratively rich, thoughtful, and meaningful. Games like Half-Life 1998 would successfully mix the first-person shooter with elements of adventure games, developing stories and characters and puzzles to be solved demonstrating that there was still an audience for this type of thing. And future games would follow suit, absorbing, I mean, for example, the di- He's talking about 1999, that, like, he's talking about Half-Life. What about, like, System Shock? What about Thief? What about Deus Ex? You've moved on now to, like, Mass Effect? 
If you're going to tell me all about the... Now, because you're talking about gay... It, uh, I, guess, I, guess, I guess what I get what he's getting at, but it's like violent cells. Why do you think... It's the same reason why movies are mostly action movies. Like, most popular movies are action-adventure, fighty-punch superhero movies, or explosion fucking whatever, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, shit like that, blockbuster shit. You don't get, like, the French connection in the bl blowing out fucking box offices and getting, like, Happy Meal toys. You know, that just doesn't happen. Dialogue tree method Pe people like action. Characters. And yet, because the core mechanic hasn't changed, there are a huge number of people who will never discover the nuances of Bioshock 2007 or Mass Effect 2007 at all because they have no, at all. no interest in a game where you have to shoot people over and over to make the story go. Of course, adventure games never sounds like a fucking skill issue. Never completely died, and the rise of the internet, smartphones, and tablets have proved a fertile ground for new indies and revivals of classics. And there's even a much touted VR adaptation of Mist on the horizon. But these are all in the. This is such a. And I feel like there are videos that I've seen that basically get at what he's trying to get at. I think, which is. It's like a fundamental question of why is it that violence and action are the things that we have. This is like, it's a, it's a criticism that I have a lot of the time when I see like some fucking, it's like the game awards or something. And it's like some new game gets announced and it's just another new game where you shoot people or stab people. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I always think of Katamari. Give me a new game that makes me think of Katamari where I'm not like killing and fighting people. And where something interesting is happening. Uh, and it's like, you know, like a, an untitled goose game or something. Something that's like a unique thing that you're doing that isn't just exploding and shooting people and stabbing them. And I like a lot of games. I've been playing Yakuza lately. I like a game where you punch people and hit them and whack them with things, you know? But, but man, it's hard to get excited when it's just another one that's like that. So I guess I get what he's fucking getting at with like, yeah, why aren't there more games like Myst? But that doesn't make the video not frustrating and boring and annoying. And boy, I, this guy's just a weirdo. Let's defund the Paw Patrol, everybody, because they're making the games... They're making them the games capitalist. Fringes of what has become gaming culture, or like casual games, think Candy Crush 2012 or Angry Birds 2014, an ignored or ridiculed thing that is not part of that culture at all. Today, excluding sports games, almost any list of the most popular games is dominated almost exclusively by action games in the Doom mold. Almost exclusively by action games in... Okay, hang on. Let me let me get the full quote here. Today, excluding sports games, mm -hmm. almost any list of the most popular games is dominated almost exclusively by action games in the... Okay, in this very list that you're showing me, you're talking about in the Doom mold. There's not one game here that's in the Doom mold. I mean, what, like, unless you're casting a really broad fucking net, you're showing me Kingdom Hearts, Mario Odyssey, Mortal Kombat 11, sure, that one's pretty violent, I guess. I mean, these are all action games, I, I guess. Zelda has a lot of puzzles in it, so is Mario. Uh, but, but none of them are even, none of these, like... You're showing me this. None of these are even first-person shooters. You can't just show me, like, most popular games of whatever, and it, it could at least be, like, a thing that you're showing that represents the argument you're making. And instead, you, you're you literally... Yeah, you know, usually it's just games like Doom, and every game, excluding the sports game, is, like, Mario and Zelda and Kingdom Hearts. You know, famous Doom clones. Doom mold. The Doom Myst Mold. Might have been the last time, maybe the only time, a top-selling game of this class. There is a Mar. There's a few Mario Doom mods. Uh, what was it? It's like uh, Legend of the Se Seven Coins or something. There's, there's like a whole series of ones that are like a Doom Mario conversion thing. They're, they're pretty good. And then there's other ones that are, you know, other styles of that too. No, there's definitely Doom Mario out there. Or female. The, the, that's the great thing about Doom is that probably all of those games could be made in the Doom mold if they really wanted to. Players than male ones. 
game companies essentially stop trying to market to them at all. Again, it's not that girls can't enjoy such games. It's that they're not the target audience this of the is game. such a fucking bad video. It's like all over the place. Why did he tell me how many discs Doom came on? This video's 20 minutes long. I know how many floppy discs Doom came on. And, 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 and we're finally getting back to, like, fucking marketing games toward women or whatever. Good, good job, buddy. You're finally back here. Makers. We've been waiting it's not for you. games like Doom are bad per se. The problem is with the methodology of slicing off a demographic, targeting to it relentlessly, encouraging people to associate brands with their self-identity, making what they sell not just a product, but a lifestyle. It's with aggressively crafting and- What the fuck? How did we get to- how did we get to fucking loving Star Wars now? Or bad what? class had more female players than male ones. Game companies essentially stop trying to market to them at all. Uh -huh. Again, it's not that girls can't enjoy such games. It's that they're not the target audience of the game makers. <coughs> and it's not that games like Doom are bad per se. The problem is with the methodology of slicing off a demographic, targeting to it relentlessly, encouraging people to associate brands with their self-identity, <coughs> making what they sell not just a product. <coughs> no, I heard everything that he said. I mean, I went back like for extra context, like I coughed and missed something. No, it's pretty much all there. He suddenly pivoted this into <coughs> a, a thing about how making a brand your whole life is a problem. Wow, I mean, that's not related really to the, anything else in this video, but I guess I agree, you know. A lifestyle. Sure. It's aggressively crafting and marketing that brand through toxic masculinity because it sells without any regard for the repercussions. And the result is what's become gamer culture. And when people have tried to point out that maybe some of this stuff is sexist, retrograde, Here or tasteless, we go, everybody. they've been shouted down, demonized, and literally terrorized. <laughs> How could this happen to me? <sighs> now, I watched the Anita Sarkeesian videos on stream recently. That's why I've been referencing them frequently throughout this um, um, awful videos, this awful channel that we've been watching tonight. Uh, I, I, I watched her videos on stream recently and they were notably uh, real bad. They were very vapid and shallow and did not get to the core of any issues. Much like how yours isn't really. It's funny that I guess she was she was a, a, an inspiration toward you. Similarly, you also have nothing to say. Uh, um, and your videos are just about as boring, really. Actually, yeah, they're really on par. You guys, hope maybe she can maybe maybe she can get you a job. And from this toxified loam rose GamerGate. Game GamerGate! Oh my God! Hey! Gamer Gate! Hey! Gamer Gate has been written about elsewhere at length better than I can. Endless Gamer Gate! a jilted ex trying to slut shame an indie game maker by pointing out that she'd slept with a gaming journalist, ballooned into a camp. Well, it was several gaming journalists who were all giving her game specifically good, good press. But all right, sure. Campaign of harassment and persecution against women in gaming in general, and women who. Uh, the video has just gotten ten minutes longer, guys. <laughs> the inevitable GamerGate video just got ten minutes longer. Ooh! and lack of diversity. Ooh! In particular, and this provided a template for harassment campaigns against supposed. True GamerGate never dies. It is only. Reborn! Social justice warriors, a festering cesspool of white male grievance from which. Yeah, that's me shooting Rand. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> He's turning into shooting rampages now. Wow, this video is. You know, joking about Red Letter Media, this is. It reminds me of when Rich Evans described the movie Ryan's Babe, and he was like. This is like uh, 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 when when astronauts take food up to up to space. You you put a little water into this video, and it'll let out into like five or six different video essays. Yeah, yeah. This is gonna be enough content for the whole return trip. It's crazy.
As Slade has pointed out, the actual connection between real shootings and video games is not violent games causing violent behavior directly, as hand-wringing moralists and bad faith gun activists have claimed, but rather the culture that has risen up around them. So, um, the real connection between mass shoot- wow, wow, I just noticed that this article too. <laughs> wonderful who made this great article oh man well it says right there this what site is that it says users up here by the way under where it says video games in the title the the article says users the real connection between video games and mass shootings guys it's gamer game i can't i can't believe it here i thought it was you know mental illness and gun problems and you know, probably like nine or seven or eight or ten other things before um, before it would be Gamergate. But, you know, smug little Avatar Man here has informed us otherwise. So I, I guess we have to listen to him. I have no choice but to listen. I'm so glad I didn't click off the video in boredom because it really, it really, it really, it really gets good toward the end here. There was a moment in the 90s where this seemed like it wasn't going to come to pass. Where the popularity of Mist and the drive towards now oh that article came out one day after the the shooting that that um that article came out one day after a shooting uh, that's great that's cool so people see a mass shooting and they think oh I can make this about Gamergate awesome and send article oh that's gonna make me at least twenty dollars hell yeah I stand with the victims hashtag never again of games aimed at a wide audience might have created a gaming culture more like yeah so um um i mean people were kind of fucking they were they were right on the money people in chat i mean it's been said before that like jack thompson and anita sarkeesian are really similar you know like it's i mean fuck we may we realize that anita and prager you have almost the exact same video format like the down to the down to the color of backdrop used in some of the videos being a few shades of difference, like the same kind of dark teal color. Uh, uh, her her videos are very very similar to PragerU videos, um, and and yeah, the drive I mean, towards narrative games aimed at a wide audience might have. Yeah, I mean this guy, th this guy has uh managed to managed to really do this wow uh he's 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 really managed to do this people have pointed out before that like jack thompson and anita are pretty pretty similar uh and people in chat this whole time were just like um yeah this is going to turn into a whole thing about how violent video games make you a shooter uh and i'm like well that's a stretch that seems like a stretch no, it really did. It somehow came around to that. I was I was not thinking big picture on that one. It did. It came back to that. Uh it came around to uh violent video games are bad because of my political reason that's more valid than yours inherently. Uh which is that's super great. I'm so, it's I this this video is so so much dumber than I thought it would be. It created a even. gaming culture more like the general culture an audience as wide and vast as that of other mass media. But a capitalist would argue that this result was simply the law of the marketplace. First-person shooter games sold better, and so their rise was inevitable. But choices had been made all along, beginning with the marketing of computers primarily to boys at the dawn of PCs, which meant that even when Myst was popular with women... Yes, yes, new people that just joined. This is the same guy who had George Floyd in the Paw Patrol video. That's correct. This is a really cool channel. Now, it's occurring to me that this channel might be a fucking joke, but I really highly doubt it. And the reason it occurs, because it just reminds me of, um, there's another thing we saw recently that it reminded me of that, uh, this too. The channel Remarkable Republican, which is a guy who made several video essays, uh, decrying the Yakuza series for being, uh, like gay propaganda or something. Um, and it turned out later that he, he was actually like a, a lefty young Turks fan. He was just doing that as like a, a parody account kind of thing. And it was a pretty good parody. Uh, cause it took a lot of people, a, a lot of us were like, eh, this is probably a joke, but man, who, who's to say really, 
You know, we weren't fully convinced. This could be a, a remarkable Republican type situation, but I doubt it because it's just such a fucking dry, boring video. It, do it doesn't have a, a funny concept like, you know, Kazuma Kiryu is making the frogs gay or whatever the fuck. It's, it's just this really lame, boring video that I think, no, it's definitely giving it too much credit to assume that it's not just some guy's bad opinions uh man man imagine the smell of the farts inside this 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 space bubble and wider audiences in general the culture didn't exist for them to become a part of oh yakuza's yeah, very gay but... primed and waiting the war had never been a fair fight the entire playing field let me tell you the ending of yakuza 8 the ending of infinite wealth is Maybe some of the most gay that it's ever been. There's a, pa a part at the end where it gets real steamy. Uh, and then it gets real dramatic after, but it gets real steamy for a moment. Tilted in favor of Doom and its successors. Of course, video games are now more popular among ever wider audiences, and adventure games are having a bit of a revival. Maybe, while everyone's distracted by esports and streaming celebrities, a new kind of gaming culture is just beginning to emerge. Hi, everyone. So yeah, that's true. The villain of Yakuza 3's whole motivation is that he loves another man. That's 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 that's, that's accurate. Yeah, that is that, <laughs> that is accurate. Uh, well, all right, that's the end of the video, basically. But uh, we got two bucks from Alan Sampson asking me to to read the article he mentioned. I wonder if he links it here. Oh, I think it is. I think this is it. It's on Slate. Oh, my God. Oh, they changed the name of it, didn't they? No, they didn't. There's just multiple. Oh, there's two. Guys, there's two articles. Oh. So one of them came out August 4th, and that was short, like, just after the mass shooting, uh, 2019. The, the next one came out August 23rd, 2019. And that would be, what, five years after Gamergate, basically? Like, late August, too. So just about five years after Gamergate. Uh, and they're still talking about it. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, wow. Well, uh, we'll um, yeah, no, I gotta read this now. Uh, hang on, let me get some good, let me get some good music going here. Um, let's see here. Yeah. And, uh. Okay. A little bit of, uh, Sims 1 music here. And, um, this is very exciting. I'm very excited to bring this one to you. Um, the real connection between video games and mass shootings it's Gamergate by Evan Urquhart, uh, August 4th, 2019. Um, <clears throat> a makeshift memorial outside the Cielo Vista Mall Walmart in El Paso, Texas on Sunday. Republicans have found a culprit to blame for this weekend's dual mass shootings, and it's not guns or white nationalism. It's video games. This trend started with Fox News host John Scott, who speculated on Saturday that the shooter might be a young man who grew up playing video games. This thinking has been... Wow, what, a, what an amazing fucking opinion. What an amazing guess. This, um, this, this thinking has been picked up by others, including House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who suggested video games dehumanize individuals, and Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who cr speculated that uh, for the shooter, the, hum the murders were a video game to him. He has no sense of humanity, no sense of life. He wanted to be a super soldier for his Call of Duty game. I always like when people refer to a, vi a video game in that form of like, for his Mario game. You know, like that, that sort of thing. Um, update, update August 5th, uh, 2019, in his statement on Monday morning, President Donald Trump also blamed the shooting on, in part, the glorification of violence in our society, including the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. So is this article going to be, no, your scapegoat is wrong, my scapegoat is right? It's not because video games, it's because Gamergate. Get it, get it right here, people. Let's, let's, I mean, that's literally what it says, so I guess so. 
The calls from Republicans for parents to stop letting their kids play games, Patrick, or to use gaming behavior to uh, identify ident potential shooters ahead of time, McCarthy, seems desperate in their attempt to make the conversation about anything other than the availability of guns or the rise of violent white supremacy. But although these uh, Republicans probably don't know it, there is a clear and obvious connection between video games, white nationalist terrorism, and the image board where the El Paso shooter posted his manifesto. Uh-oh, not the image board. Nothing good ever happens on an image board. Um, <clears throat> um, um, that connection is Gamergate, the, mis the campaign of misogynistic harassment by aggrieved gamers that began in 2014 and which moved to 8chan from 4chan when the latter refused to allow Gamergaters to use that board for coordinated harassment campaigns and doxing. Well, they wouldn't even let people discuss it. I mean, no website would allow people to... The, the whole web... The whole internet basically issued a fucking blanket ban on discussing Gamergate, including 4chan at a certain point, which was really disappointing. They're not even discussing it. You know, yeah, delete the posts of the people that are doing doxing stuff, but you couldn't even just have a conversation thread about it. You would get banned. So, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know about that, but 8chan existed briefly before Gamergate, but its popularity as a place where- Guys, we're getting the full lore here. I'm so glad that somebody's finally giving us the unbiased and true and honest take on what happened in Gamergate. Um, <clears throat> 8chan existed briefly before Gamergate, but its popularity as a place where manifestos are shared and racist violence is openly advocated can be traced back to the migration of Gamergaters. Uh, Gamergaters. The, yeah, the, the, my, the, the herd of Gamergaters walking over the fucking Antarctic tundra, you know, on their, on their, 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 their seasonal migration, right. Um, the herd of Gamergaters and the specific need on the part of Gamergaters for a forum so absolute in its dedication to free speech that it would allow even harassment campaigns and doxing against individuals, specifically individual women in gaming, like Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian, the real victims, even to this day. There's th don't forget that they're the victims in all of this. Don't forget that, you know, the mass shooting that happened... I think you need to consider what Zoe Quinn has gone through, okay? Alright, I know I know that a lot of people are feeling bad right now for a lot of reasons. Some people died. But Zoe Quinn got called a whore after she fucked people for good press for her terrible video game. So, you know, is there no justice? I don't think there's justice in the world. I think that we live in a bleak society. Just a bleak, just a bleak society. Um, it was no longer enough to say terrible things on 4chan. 8chan's Gamergators needed to be able to plan and carry out terrible actions. Their flight created a core com Well, see, but this is the problem when you ban the discussion of it on 4chan, you, you, you force people to fucking go to other websites that are weird and more extreme. Like, you could have just let people fucking talk about it on Reddit or, like, NeoGAF or wherever, but no, they shut down all conversation of it everywhere uh, in a weirdly coordinated way that was like, oh, wow, this website also won't let you discuss it. That's so strange. That's so strange. Uh, you know, you could have just allowed people to talk about it normally, but then you didn't, and then they decided to fucking get weird about it, so... You know, maybe if you didn't, you know, do that, then you, you might have had some more success. Um, although some researchers have claimed to find a link between video games and aggression, meta-analyses suggest that this connection is weak or non-existent. That makes sense because the community of people who play video games is both, both vast and diverse, while the people who commit mass shootings are both few in number and overwhelmingly male. Nearly as many women report that they... Well, hang on. Aren't a lot of the mass shooters now trans? There's been like... Haven't there been like five trans mass shooters in the last like fucking six months or something? I... I don't know. I don't think it's been that many, but there's there's been a few. There's been a few, so I don't know. That's probably also... That's an interesting statistic. This was five years ago, so I mean... You know, we can't hold them to that. Uh... We can't hold them to that standard. Uh, 
I wonder if I wonder if people like this are willing to misgender a shooter if it'll make them if it'll make the statistics seem more male. I wonder if that hmm I don't know. But uh anyways, um uh, nearly as many women report that they play video games as men, and there are no significant racial differences in who plays and who doesn't. Well, yeah, more women play games uh, almost as much as men, but... But, I mean, like... I mean, like, are we all just gonna pretend that a lot of that isn't, like, fucking Candy Crush and stuff? I, I know, I know a lot of... It's not for everyone, for sure, but... I don't know, man. Uh, a lot of it is, you, you know, uh, a, lo a lot of it is, uh, um, you know, not for everybody, for sure. Uh, it was no longer enough, um, yeah, uh, let me see here. Uh, the picture does change somewhat when you ask someone, uh, when you ask whether someone identifies as a gamer. Self-identified gamers are predominantly male, but even then, non-white people identify as gamers more often than whites do. This always gets into this weird racism area that's just like, I mean, I know they wouldn't call, they'd never call it racism, but it's like this, like, this very specific, and you're white, and he's white, and what are you? You look white. Are you probably white, right? Oh, you're like Native American? Whatever, you maybe your parent one of one of your parents might have been lying to you. You look white. Like fuck, dude, I don't know. Is this pro is this progress? This feels this feels weird. This just feels weird. Anytime you read one of these articles that's like mm, overwhelmingly white. Mm, uh, I don't know, man. Are you going to start talking to me about 13% here? Come on. Settle down. Settle down with your weird your weirdness here. I don't know. Uh, uh, self-identified game. Well, who still call it? So here's the thing, right? Nobody's gonna really call themselves a fucking gamer in 2024. I think uh, possibly a part of why. I mean, that's just kind of cringe for various reasons, but there was a, 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 alongside Gamergate was the concerted effort to stop using the word gamer. Uh, all these fucking websites, the same websites that were all in on every other article that came out, all, all, you know, coordinated all at once. Uh, the Game Journal pros. Uh, all these fucking websites, they were also like, they, they were also like trying to be like, no, ga gamers are dead. We don't need to use the term gamers anymore. Gamers are bad. We don't, ga gamers has a bad identity. We need to reclaim it and call it players. We're now players, people, which I think has a worse term. I think players is, is worse. I think player is associated with someone who like fucks around with several women at once. Like, that would be a player. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if gamers is worse than players necessarily, but that was one of the ones they wanted to go with. So maybe that's why we don't say gamer as much anymore. But, uh, yeah, I don't know who's still really calling themselves a self- who's self-identifying as a gamer. Probably people that watch Ninja. Um, because gaming is so vast, it's clear that the specific grievances of Gamergate that women sh- shouldn't okay what are the specific grievances of gamergate let's learn people that women should not be allowed to criticize games from a feminist perspective that wasn't one of no, that wasn't okay you lose and that the indus and that industry attempts to increase diversity are ruining yeah, this so this is what the um yeah this is what i guess yeah uh sure all right i guess this is what happened then it's 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 amazing to me sometimes just to look at something like this where I'm like, yeah, I guess this is the historical... This is what the Wikipedia article would say, I guess. Sure, uh, alright. That's definitely very much not true, but... Alright. Um, had to do with the entitlement of an angry subculture of men within gaming, not the content of the games themselves. This subculture of gamer gators, who er by the way, this article was written five years after Gamergate, um, um, shortly after a mass shooting, um, capitalizing on a bunch of dead people and um, using Gamergate to do it. And um, it's now been five years, 
and um, uh, it's uh, we are now ten. We are now almost ten years on from Gamergate, people. I just wanted to give you a little time, a little heads up there on on the the time frame of all of this. Um, the subculture of gamer gators who erroneously believe themselves to be the only true gamers in a world of phonies is what made the culture of 8chan what it is. I mean, it's very selective, too. It's funny because the entire Gamergate thing had a side campaign that was not your shield. It was so funny. It was so funny how... Gamergate got really, like, diverse, too. I remember Jim and... and um, Jim had this picture up during one of the, like, Sargon, like, clowning on Sargon wanted to get Donald Trump to tweet about Gamergate or whatever. Gamergate 2, we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna get the band back together. Sargon and Ralph and Jim. It's gonna be great. I bet Jim doesn't even own a suit. Um, you know, uh, uh, that was all happening, and... Uh, you know, I remember that, he, that there was a, a picture that he made that it was it was the Vivian James, the Gamergate mascot, and she was like, "We're so tolerant," and it had like a fucking butt plug tail, and like it was a bunch of rainbow flags and armpit hair that was dyed purple, and it was um yeah, cause cause Gamergate tried to really get like, no guys, we aren't a hate campaign, really, we aren't. And, and, and it was all not your shield this, and I am a minority, and I support Gamergate that. And at the end of the day, it goes to show why even fucking bother with any of that fucking nonsense, because look at what happened. Uh, anybody who actually was like, no, guys, we actually care about ethics. It's like, well, at the end of the day, you know, you're a spit, you, you, you just, you, it turns out you guys just think that gamers, the women shouldn't be in gaming, sorry, that's just the, I don't make, I don't make the history books, I don't write a history, that, uh, the Slate, Slate, the Slate article writes history, um, but, right, um, uh, you know, the many, many people that, the majority of Gamergate that was actually a bunch of non-white, non-men, uh, sure, um, uh, they, they, they all were misogynist and racist then, and all the more so, uh, gamer gators wanted a safe space from which to attack the women they thought were ruining video games, and by that metric, their creation has succeeded beyond their wildest imaginings. This music's really given this, this article a kick, too. It's not, uh, difficult to imagine that it could have been a different, a different, uh, it's not difficult to imagine that it could have been a different cultural movement that made 8chan what it is today. That the aggrieved faction could have formed in another subculture of fantasy nerds, say, or sports fans. The result could have been much the same, down to the obsession with high scores that links the El Paso shooter with the Christchurch shooter, who posted his... So, um... Yeah, no, this is explicitly, like, a day or something after a mass shooting bringing up Gamergate to, uh, to, like, uh, a scapegoat, um, I don't know, I mean, it's not even a scapegoat as such, I mean, like, the whole thing is Republicans apparently still using ga games are violent, so they cause mass shootings. Well, guess what? This guy who read your article and agreed with it still also thinks that games are violent and lead to mass shootings. So, kinda interesting article here oh you know i get it's not saying that the art this article is not directly saying this this article is is instead saying that this fucking hashtag campaign from like five years before this is responsible for a mass shooting that just happened um that's what this article is, is saying um capitalizing on a bunch of deaths and stuff that's that's what this art this cool article is doing but the person who read this article, Joe Joe Schlunk, the lefty, who read this article and uh, took it to heart and really liked this article and used it in his video here and 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 sourced it here. This person has more or less also come to the conclusion, much like these, you know, evil Republicans who blame mass shootings on video games. This kind of this person has also apparently come to the conclusion that gaming leads to. You know, uh, an uptick in aggression and murders and stuff. So, it's funny. You know, it's just funny. Uh, it's just funny how that, how that, how that winds up happening. Well, um... 
That's uh. That's some Mexican music. They're not. Those people aren't allowed to play video games. So it's nice that we have some of their music in The Sims, at least. Um, you know, that was also a lady singing. They're also not allowed to play video games. So it's it's cool that she was allowed to be in the song. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Here's a guy who's uh, that was twenty. That article was twenty twenty. So that was six years after Gamergate. Or that video, rather, was 2020, so six years after Gamergate. Still bringing up Gamergate and Anita Sarkeesian. Uh, and now we are, you know, four years on from that. And, uh, I mean, the guy still makes videos. He, he, uh, How will capitalism end the Orville Edward Bernstein and what is to be done? Yeah, this is the Literate Machine channel. Uh, if you want some really great... I mean, there's more I want to watch on here at some point. Like, Pink Floyd's The Wall and The Rise of the Alt-Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's That's got to be a good one. That sounds like a really quality video right there. Um, I'm definitely going to have to watch that. And uh, But not right now. Not right now. Uh, that's enough of Literate Machine. I don't know who linked that one. There's a second article, too. Gamergate never died. It is only reborn. It's written by the same author, less than a month apart from the last game Gamergate article that he wrote. Uh, and it's more or less just the same thing. I mean, it's it's just... It's just him, like, going through a very biased, one-sided view of what Gamergate was. Uh, a, a factually incorrect view of what Gamergate was. But I guess the facts don't matter at this point because, I mean, for one thing, who gives a shit? And for another thing, a lot of those tweets are, like, gone now. A lot of the actual evidence of the shit that was said back in the day, videos that were made, a lot of that's actually gone now. So it's hard to really trace back anything that far. Uh, uh, gamers didn't die. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, um, we're talking about the, the gamer, ga death of gamers thing, social justice war. I, I can't bring myself to read more of this. I can't. I can't. Um, it's just very stupid. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna make my video eventually that goes over it and... Uh, it's, I mean, I'll just be called a, a right-wing chud or whatever. I mean, the cycle fucking, it's just, it's just team politics to the end of time, basically. You know, uh, just ne never, never gonna win. Uh, ne you're, you're never, we're never gonna have a society where, where, I don't know, where <laughs> it's not just a bunch of bullshit. That's, that's my, that's my cool, super unique takeaway. That's my super original takeaway, just like Literate Machine and Anita Sarkeesian. Man, it's weird that they gender toys. And my version of that is, man, it's weird that society sucks. There you go. That's my original take right there. Um, 